This time now joined by the executive director of Amnesty International South Africa, Shanila Mohammed. Shanila, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, sh surely Amnesty International doesn't come to such a conclusion uh, quite easily. What is the explanation for, for having reached this uh, uh, conclusion? Good evening, Talbot, and good evening to your viewers. Well, first of all, um, I have to say that our, our report took us four years to complete, four years of detailed investigation, evidence gathering, um, and, and really looking at everything through a legal and international law lens. And um, so, you know, yes, you're right. We didn't come to this conclusion lightly. Uh, we, we have, this report is building on what other organizations have said, but, but the difference with this report, Talbot, is that we've also looked at Israel, Maine, not just the occupied territories. And we've seen that a system of apartheid exists across the board throughout Israel. Um, and, you know, I just have to uh, respond uh, to the Israeli um, comment that, uh, you know, Amnesty International would not have been saying these things if it was in a Jewish state. That is totally untrue. We have recently re uh, published a report against Myanmar where we've We've, uh, again, called it an apartheid state. We have spoken about Syria. We have a report on Syria. We have a very, very detailed report on Iran. So, you know, everything that is being said by the Israeli state is, uh, with regards to amnesty is not true. Our job is to look at human rights violations, and that is what we do. We don't get involved in the political intricacies. We look at where rights are violated. And by the way, we've also looked at where Palestinians have violated rights. Now, your findings are that the Israeli policies had been designed to enforce Jewish supremacy. Uh, what did you find in your investigations? Well, what we found, Tabo, is that, you know, uh, uh, that the Israeli policy, when you look at, you know, the way in which uh, the apartheid conven convention and the Rome statute are set out, and these include uh, things like unlawful killings, torture, forcible transfer, the denial of basic rights and freedoms, but also, you know, even as I speak, uh, now, uh, you know, there are Jewish families who are being pushed out of their homes. I mean, we have seen cases of families, you know, being uh, told at midnight to leave their homes, and these homes are then given to settlers. And so, you know, the way in which we have seen this is that all the rights are given to the Jewish population and that the Palestinians' rights are actually taken from them, whether they are Palestinians who are living in Israel or whether they're Maine or whether they are Palestinians living in the occupied territories. Of course, the occupied territories, the rights uh, violations are even worse, but Palestinians living on the mainland are also not treated uh, as equals. They are treated as an inferior race and all their rights are dependent on the Israelis allowing them to do, uh, to, to exercise even their basic human rights. So the superiority that is given to the, the Jewish population is, is real, Tabo. We have seen it over and over again. We have gathered over 200 pages of evidence in this report uh, that will uh, justify the statements that we are making. Highlight for us the extent of the segregation and, and dispossession uh, and, and exclusion, particularly across those territories which are, are, are under the control of Israel. Well, you know, I mean, the, 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 the territories, most of the territories are under the control of Israel. Uh, but, you know, what we've seen is a systematic uh, disenfranchisement of um, uh, Palestinians. We have seen, you know, the uh, land that is uh, meant for Palestinian development being taken and given to the, to the um, Jewish population. And actually, if I, if I can give you just a few um, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, statistics that have come out of our report, you know, over 35% of Gaza's agricultural land and 85% of the coastal fishing waters are off limits to Palestinians. So they are not allowed to go into those areas. During the 2018-19 uh, Great March of the returning, uh, March of returning Gaza, Israeli forces killed 214 civilians, including 46 children. And these were people who were just protesting peacefully. Mm. Today, Israeli settlements cover nearly 10% of the West Bank. Israeli authorities have allocated 70% of the land in Area C of the West Bank, which includes the most fertile land to illegal settlements that are handed over to Jewish settlers. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. So we have documented, you know, just a whole litany of, of rights violations. And really, the way in which uh, we have identified the problem is that the Israeli state 
and the, and the way in which they practice apartheid, it is designed to keep the people of Palestine to keep Palestinians, um, you know, totally oppressed in a similar way that the apartheid state did in South Africa. I mean, they don't have the right to move. They don't have the right to stay in their own homes. We saw that happening in South Africa. We saw the way in which people were resettled. We saw the way in which people were forcibly moved from their homes. So it's a very similar situation that the Palestinians are are facing in South Af in in uh, um, Israel today. And I think that you know, in our report. Court, as you said in the beginning, what we're saying is that this is the, the, the international community has got to stop uh, uh, believing the lies that Israel is putting out and has got to take some decisive action. You know, to allow an apartheid state to operate without any uh, sanction is just unacceptable. And, and of course, you know, we know uh, the, the, the way in which the Palestinians are suffering. So, you know, with our report, and of course, this is a launch of our campaign, the report is, is just the start of it. We are really going to push for the ICC to take action and for the uh, um, Security Council to take action. We are also calling for sanctions against the, the state of Israel, but we are also calling for um, uh, uh, an embargo or, or sort of a, a sanction on, on the sale of arms to Israel. So we are really going to be pushing for change this time around, Tabo, because as you heard our Secretary General speak, the, the situation there is just horrendous. Yeah. How, how does Israel then justify this? Uh, I mean, normally they, they, they would probably come even on this show and say, well, Amnesty International is turning a blind eye to so many murders that have been committed against Israelis, uh, so many uh, innocent civilians who've lost this and that and that. So they do this comparison to say, why is Amnesty International not saying anything about that? Well, you know, Tabo, like all countries, Israel does have the right and indeed the obligation under international law to protect all people in its control and to ensure the security of, of the people. But, you know, what we say as Amnesty International, your security-related policies must still comply with international law and they must be proportionate. And so, you know, security can never be a justification or pretext for human rights violations and crimes against humanity. And I think, you know, the biggest thing to, to, to note here in the Amnesty report is that we are saying what Israel is doing is actually crimes against humanity. It is war crimes. And so for them to use security threats, et cetera, as an excuse to perpetrate war crimes is just unacceptable. I mean, and, you know, it should never be uh, allowed to be an argument. And by the way, Tavo, it's not that we don't criticize Hamas or, or other Palestinian uh, organizations that, uh, that, uh, that also engage in violence. We do that as well. Wherever there is a human rights violation, we will uh, criticize it and we will, uh, you know, condemn it. So, you know, Amnesty is not uh, looking at this uh, from a one-sided approach. We have in the past come out quite strongly against, uh, you know, uh, acts of violence perpetrated by uh, the Palestinian groups, uh, armed groups as well. So, you know, for Israel to come out and say that amnesty is biased or that amnesty, you know, is anti-Semitic, it's, uh, it's just not true. It's just an excuse to distract and de to detract from what's happening in Palestine. Shanila Mohammed, appreciate your time and thank you very much for joining us tonight here on In Focus, Executive Director of Amnesty International, South Africa.